Tennessee has Welcome back to the fair, uh, fierce uh, forum, and we already Stanford, Wisconsin, and Nebraska. We got to in this fifth and the final set. Texas setter up front. That's a blocking mismatch from Minnesota on the outside. Who's at the pig? Ah! Come on, swing it back. Let's go. Let's, oh my, oh my God, oh my God, oh. Come on now, swing on that with it. Oh, oh, oh. Come on. Jeez. Now we see this blocking sub come in. Reagan Rutherford, the double sub. This will provide just a little bit more height. Then we see from Andy Carlson. Swindle now will set from the backcourt. So that double sub. With the three Texas points in the set, whistle. Um, for what? He was not quite ready for that serve. Skinner certainly was. Nope. The down rep was at the score. Sorry, I'm not even making that tomorrow. Friday. Swindle just into the match. Out for Wenis. Tips it. All right, come on, guys. Oh, oh. That certainly sounded like it clipped one of the blockers up front. Oh, my God. Challenge. Challenge. Again, a reminder, you get an additional challenge here in this fifth set. Based on that look, it looks like it maybe got that pinky. to tell from that angle. Let's look at it just a little bit faster. Sometimes you can see that movement of that pinky just a little bit better. Yeah, there you go. Don't touch. I'm going to touch based on that look we had just previously seen. Yep. yep. Quick one. Texas trying to come back in the match. They're down 2-1. Trying to come back in the set. Just getting some clarification on what rotation they're in. Skinner still back there to serve. Again, Swindle setting in the backcourt. Shaftmaster also in the backcourt for Minnesota. Skinner serving. Hanson pass to attack. Texas within two. Time out, Deegan Cook in Minnesota. All of a sudden, Texas storming back down 6 0 to start off this fifth set. If you're just joining us, it's been an absolute nail biter. Let's take another look at this. Jenna Wynn is taking a pretty good swing off of this. Touches the top of the block. You can see that double touch from Julia Hansen just couldn't get out of the way fast enough. Yes, Mars Tuesday. Two long runs either way. Five nothing start for Minnesota. And then five of the last seven points to Texas. Really just showing how both teams have really been able to fight back. Minnesota starting off this set after a really tough loss, getting crushed 25 to 13 in set four. And now Texas down five points. They were able to absolutely storm back. 
Jenna Wenis, one of the go-to hitters alongside Madison Skinner on this Texas team. 13 kills for Wenis against her former team. Now, Jenna Wenis has done this in back-to-back -back nights. She's really trying to find a way to put the team on her back. And in this rotation, specifically with the center up front, she's trying to carry that heavy load. She's done a really, really great job in tough situations, finding ways to score. One thing she's doing really well, she was using the block. She's pushing it off, finding ways to just use that to her advantage. Not picture there, but she's played some good back row defense, too. I mean, 19 digs, insane numbers that you see from an outside attacker. That's what this Texas team has become to be known for, too. That defense has been outstanding. I mean, when you have her next to Emma Halter, next to Kayla Akana, it's impressive what they do in the backcourt. Two double-doubles to begin 2024 for Wenis. 18 kills, 10 digs last night. Minnesota regrouping after the timeout. Really well placed tip from Lydia Grove, just going right over the block. What made that so effective was it didn't go too high before it came down. It was just a light touch to put it right over almost the back of these blockers. See, not even going over the height of the antenna, that makes that tip so effective and doesn't give the libero enough time to scoop under it. Feathering. From Lydia Grove. It's a great look at it. You see Texas just really far back on defense, doesn't give Halter enough time to under that one. Miller says hi back home. Rendell saves the point for now. Team switching sides at the eight point mark. Minute team rounds it down. Haven't seen a ton of middle production tonight. It's been on the lower end of that, but when they've gotten set, they have been so effective. Full Plus a minute right now hitting well over 500. Final time that Jarrett Elliott can stop this match. Texas takes a timeout. The perfect time to set that middle attack too. It's a perfect ball. You spread out that offense, get the slide going. Middle blocker a little bit late to it because she has to stay disciplined because that ball also might go outside. Minute did a great job of capitalizing, going right inside that seam. And that middle combination with support from the back and Blaviak and the juice. And that match against Stanford in 2019, notable for a lot of reasons. Anytime you beat a number one, notable. They beat him at Penn State. Stanford went on to win the national championship that year. Minnesota went to the final four that season. Gopher fans hope they can win here and use that as a good omen going forward. This Minnesota team has just been outstanding since they came in. Five sets against a top five team in Stanford last night. And what that takes to reset then again today, they were up 2-1 in that match. That was a heartbreaking match for them that finished in a 15-13 fifth set. So the mindset that you have to come in is, okay, we have absolutely nothing to lose. This is the number one team in the country. We just battled with the top five team in the country. Clearly, we can hang with the top five teams. And we can do it tonight. Michelle, what's the latest with the horns? Well, Jared Elliott is just so calm in the biggest moments, it seems. He says, listen, guys, pretty simply, we know how to win, and we just need to turn up the dial just a little bit on them, and we'll take this. So a lot of confidence and very measured, steadily, emotionally. Tested down four. First to 15 wins it. Manson cross court. Minus, strong swing at it. Manson, and he just couldn't find it. That's what makes a good outside hitter. It might not go down in the first swing, but you have to dig in and know that you're going to get the next swing in the next swing. You have to continue to take big ones, especially against the number one team in the country. Tips are not going to win you this match. Still a long way from the biggest matches of the season. Those happen in December, but... This is one to remember in Minnesota. Can close this out.
Texas is challenging a net call. Let's see if there's something there. If not, could this be a free timeout? Absolutely. I think another chance for Jared Elliott to talk with his team and just kind of get that reset moment as Minnesota clearly has a lot of momentum. Put this one the weekend right there. And we love to see that in a fifth set. And the question for Minnesota has been, can you finish? They were up 2-1 against Stanford last night and couldn't finish in that fifth set. Here, up 11-5 in the fifth. This is where you have to finish it off. Texas was perfect in their five centers last year, went 3-0, including that Sweet 16 win against Tennessee. Road to the dip. Hanson on the high ball. It goes! That's a gutsy swing from Julia Hanson. Ball coming from the complete other side of the court. She knows she's going to have two big blockers in front of her. And she took the gutsy swing and went all out with it. After Texas closed it to 7-5, Minnesota has gone on a 5-0 run. Overhead growth. Right back to Hanson. Texas defends this time. Wendell with the back set for Rutherford. And off of Hanson and out of play. Texas is going to need a little more of that offense to start clicking. Up until that point, they were hitting zero in this fifth set. They have to find a way to gain some offensive momentum. A lot of that might start with Maddie Skinner. I know she's in the back court, but she gets set a ton back there. They need to get something going. Vinny joins Skinner in the back court. Texas trying to make the climb. Down six. Booker handled it off the tape. Right back to Hanson. Rutherford and Singletary team up. Now, yeah, really good finish from Raven Rutherford up front. Identifying that tip pretty early on, and that hang time allowed her to go just a little bit longer to push that ball down. So just keeping those hands up for that split second longer resulted in a stop. Minnesota two points away. Closing in on what could be a historic win for this Golden Gopher program against the number one team in the country, the back-to-back -back national champions. Deegan Cook said that making the tournament is not the standard at Minnesota. Playing in the final weekend is. This would be proof that they can do that. Match point on the ace by Julia Hansen. Two to three. Darn! Oh! The confidence that it takes to go out and take down a number one team in five sets as you had just had a five-setter against the number five team has been incredible. Darn! Why, why was y'all on the beach? Well, congratulations to, to, uh, to Minnesota Golden Gophers of winning this game against my team. It's, it's Texas Longhorns. The hometown kid. Ten minutes from home. McKenna Wooker.
Michelle with Melanie Shaftmaster after the Gophers win over number one. Connor, thanks so much. Melanie, you just took out the number one ranked team in America right Why now. Why would Mitch do that? I don't think I really have words. I mean, I think we, you know, you talk about how you can do it and, like, just keep playing and you can do it. And I think we finally proved ourselves we're not the team we were last year. We're not the team we have been in the past. Um, we have a really good group of people with us. And I think we just, last night was a little, we had a lot of serving air, so I think we had a little bit of a down going yesterday. And then we came in today with, like, we have nothing to lose. And it's our day. I mean, we're not going to get to play here ever again against Texas. So we just went, we just went for it. And it worked. <laughs> Take me into that final moment. Speaking of going for it, what is running through your mind in that last point? I was just so happy. I mean, we have so many people that haven't played, like, in the past, and we have a bunch of people coming in and out. I mean, Lauren and Elise are my roommates, and one of them's a center, and one of them's an opposite, and they're coming in and surf subbing, and it's just, it's just crazy. I mean, it took the whole entire team to get this done, and I don't have words right now. It's a great feeling, so, yeah, that's all I got. Well, she's being modest, guys. She got a double-double playing out of her mind defensively, too, which I know Emily appreciates. Melanie, thank you so much for your time. Congratulations. Guys, back over to you. Melanie Shaftmaster, Minnesota, so deep in her heart, stayed through the coaching change. Oh. Injuries. She deserves a moment like that. I mean, for a fifth-year player that's meant so much to this club and really the state of Minnesota, to have a win like that, one of the biggest of her career, it's so important. For those kind of players. All the way to cap this weekend. Gophers take down number one Texas. A memorable weekend thanks to our entire crew for putting this on. Our entire Fox Sports production team has done a great job. Looks like Keon Villachahi, Connor Runyon, Emily Eamon, Michelle McMahon saying goodnight from Milwaukee. Thanks for watching. Minnesota wins it. Wow.